What's going on my dear friends? Today in this video, let's learn and master the Angular Framework's latest version. So, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to a new section of our Angular journey. Today we are diving into one of the most important concepts in Angular development, which is Angular services. Understanding Angular services is key to building a scalable, maintainable and efficient Angular application. Alright, so first thing first, what exactly are Angular services? Simply put, a service in Angular is a class that provides specific functionality across multiple components in your application. Services are designed to handle tasks like data fetching, business logics, logging, or any operation that should be shared across components. Think of a service as the behind the scenes workers of your application. While components handle the user interface and interaction, services do the heavy lifting by managing data and logic that doesn't belong directly in the components. In our previous lesson, we learned about sharing data between components when there is a parent-child relationship. But what if you have two components that aren't directly related and you still need to share data between them? Imagine a scenario where you have a list of posts in a component and you want to share this data with another component that's not a child or parent of the first. In this situation, using the traditional input-output decorators won't work because there is no direct relationship between the components, right? So here is where Angular services comes to the rescue. With services, you can share data and methods across all components regardless of their relationship. This means you can use Angular services to share data and common methods among unrelated components easily. So let's break it down with a practical example. Imagine you have an array of posts stored in a component. And you want to render this post data in another component that's unrelated to the first component. You can't use input output decorators here because the components don't have a direct relationship. So how do we solve this? So for this we can create an Angular service and we will declare this post array inside the Angular service and then import the service into both components. By doing this, both components can access and manipulate the array even though they aren't related in the components hierarchy. But it's not just about sharing data. Let's say you have two buttons in these two unrelated components and both buttons need to perform the same logic when clicked. Instead of duplicating the same method in both components, you can create the onClick method in the Angular service. Then both components can access and execute this method through the service, right? So this approach not only reduces code duplication but also saves a lot of time and effort making your application more efficient and easier to maintain. Alright, so some of you guys might be wondering why should we use services when we can just put all our logics in the components. So great question but guys using angular service give you some advantages like so when we using Angular services, we write all the logical stuff inside the service file, right? So by moving logic out of your components and into the service, you keep your components focused on what they do the best, such as handling the user interface. So this separation make your code easier to read, maintain and test. So next, a single service can be injected into multiple components meaning you write your logic once and reuse it whenever you need it. This reduces multiple duplication codes and makes your app more efficient. So with logic centralized in services, updates or changes are easier to manage. Think that if in any case our data fetching logic codes changes, we only need to update the relevant service file and all the components using that service automatically get the updated behavior. So like this we can list down so many advantages using a separate service file. 
Alright, so guys, that's uh, the quick introduction to Angular services. They are the backbone of our Angular application. So hope you guys all got the idea of what is an Angular service. So in the next lecture, we'll get our hands dirty by creating and using Angular services in our Angular application. So we will go step by step, setting up a new service, injecting it into a component and seeing how it all comes together. So let's see you in the next lesson. Alright guys, so now let's see the Angular services in action. So guys, in order to create these services, we have two approaches. We can generate this using the Angular CLI and also we can generate this manually from scratch. So guys, in this lecture, let's create this service manually from scratch. So you guys can understand this Angular services, how this works, right? So all right, so guys, nothing fancy here. Yeah? Just simply create a file inside the app folder. So as you guys know, we will store all of our Angular projects files inside the app folder. So inside this, simply create the file. Um, wait guys, before that, let's store this inside of a separate folder. So we can organize this in a better way. All right, so right click on this app folder and select new folder and name this folder as services now let's inside of this folder we will create our new angular service file so again right click on this folder and select this new file option now let's name this so as usual first we have to give a name for this so guys i am going to use this to handle the users data so let's name this user so after this we have to pass service extension so after this dot service and at last add the file extension which is dot ts so guys we learned about this naming convention when we learning angular components right so when we create a new file inside of an angular project we will first give it a name then we will mention that what type of file is that if this is a component we pass component if this is a service we add service so if this is a pipe we will add pipe so at last we must add the file extension which is ts so which stands for typescript right all right so hope you guys got the idea all right now we have the service file so let's work with the service file so guys angular service is a just simply a typescript class no need to worry about many things like angular components right so just simply create a typescript class Let's do this inside the user service ts file. First add the class keyword. After this, give this class a name something user service. For this, use the title case naming convention. Each word's first word capital letters. So this U and S capital letters. After this, add the class scope. Alright guys, that's it. We successfully created the Angular service manually. Alright guys, now let's see a use case of this angular service. So first thing first, guys, think that we have a set of user objects stored inside of a web component. So I already created this object. So nothing much here, simply array of users object. And also guys, we have two components. One is the post list component and the user component. We already created this. So in any case, uh, any of you guys don't have these components, simply generate this component using the angular CLI. Simply you can run this command ng g c and the component name. So guys we already learned about this right. So next now what I want to do is I want to show the username inside the post list component and inside of this user component as well. So how do we do that? We can use the parent to child data flow approach using the input method. So let me quickly do this. Mm, guys, I will do this process a bit faster. So we already learned about this parent to child data flow, right? So let's first send the user array to the post list component. So we send that via binding to this component selector. So inside square brackets, add the child component capturing variable child user and assign this to our user array. Next, we have to capture this inside the post list component so inside the post list component is file we will capture this using the input decorator 
something like this now we have the user data so we can render this using the string interpolation so guys we cannot directly render an object inside the view we have to convert that to a json value so for this we can use the json pipe right so save this all and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got the user object rendered inside the browser so for the user component also we can use the same approach but guys uh, i want to render this user component inside the post list component not inside the app component let i show you guys let's add the user component selector inside the post list component and remove it from the app component so in this case there is no connection between this user component and with the app component but user components view is rendered inside the browser now this user component is rendered through the post list component so now this users components parent component is this post list component so now in order to get the user data from the app component es file we cannot directly pass that value to this user component from the app component because now there is no connection between these two components right so guys now how do we do this for this we can again send this input value to the user component from the post list component so we got this from the app component right so again in here we have to use the parent child data flow approach but guys think again i want to load the user details inside of a card component which is added inside the user component so again we have to pass the receiving input data to the card component so it's not easy and we are repeating the same thing again and again if you continue using the parent to child data flow approach will end up repeating the same process over and over passing data down multiple levels of components this code can become noisy and difficult to manage especially as your application grows and the component hierarchies gets more complex as a solution for this we can take the advantage of the angular service so simply with a service we can store our user data in a centralized location and share it across multiple components without worrying about the parent child relationship so guys now as we discuss let's add the user data inside the user service which we created before so copy this user array from the app component is file and place it inside the user service class this will allow us to centralize our data management and make it accessible to any component that needs it so now in order to access this we have to call this service class from the relevant component so first let's call this service class from the app component so guys how do we do that unlike methods in order to call a class we have to create a new instance of this class right so guys how do we create this new instance very simple so first thing first in order to access this service class outside of this we have to export it right so now inside the component constructor we'll create a new instance of the service class so inside this new keyword and after this add the user service class name and select this auto complete this will add the import statement at last don't forget to add the parentheses so guys this is how we create the new instance of a class this is not an angular thing this is purely javascript right all right so let's um assign this new instance to a variable something user service this name is not like this first letter u is lower case and the second letter s is upper case right so uh, now set this data type to any next assign this new instance to this variable inside the constructor now after this simply log this variable so we can see what we are getting with this console.log inside the parenthesis pass the variable which is this user service that's it so save this all and go to the browser inside the browser console we can see this user service object inside that we can see the user array 
so now we can simply render this inside the app component so guys this new instance will simply create an exact copy of the user service class inside the app component including all the variables and methods so then we can simply access those variables and methods from this app component without any issues so hope you guys got the idea Alright guys, so now simply let's load this user data inside the browser view. So inside the component HTML file, create an h1 tag and inside this add the string interpolation and inside that pass the user service variable and inside that simply access the user array. How do we access that? Very simple. After this add dot and the user array variable name so in order to display this array object value inside the browser we have to use the json pipe right so and the json pipe here that's it so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got this user array which is loaded using the user service perfect